In this video, I want to show you how to move materials you might have in Scroogey over to Canvas. I'm going to go to Courses. The courses are going to be the upcoming classes. That's not what I'm trying to move. So I'm going to want to go to My Courses. And the My Courses will bring me to the place I can access the archives. Here on the left, click on Archived. And that'll open up your archives for you. I can now go back to, say, my spring class. Let's uh, pick on the ethnobotany class here. And that will then open up my spring ethnobotany class. Under Options, I want to save the course to my resources. I'll click on Save the Course to Resources. And that may take some time, but I will get to save that out to my resources. I want to save the whole course. I don't need it in a folder. Just leave it folder as with resources. Submit. Now this particular process can take some time, and it will tell you that. It can take time to save it to resources. Um, that's what it will tell you up here at the top. A large operation is being executed. Once it, that's done, it will appear as a folder in my resources. I've already done that earlier on. You can see it down here. There's my course resources. At this point, I want to export that folder from up here, up at the top, that little triangle. I'll go to export, and I'll have to, uh, home is the place I want to be, but the folder, uh, depending how long you've been using Schoology, it could be a good bit of stuff, but there's my course that I, that I want to move. In fact, the, the earlier version I was looking at is here, but that's the new export has already landed. I now have two. But I'll pick the whole course, just like that, just at the top here. Though, that's the whole folder with no dashes in front of it. So back to my ethnobotany course. That's what I want to export. And then I'll click on Export. And that will then export this, uh, uh, allowing me to save it to, to somewhere. And it, it'll take some time. It'll show up in the transfer area. And then I uh, that will get saved that uh, it can save that out when that process is finished that'll typically save it to the download folder or the desktop or um, wherever the most common place is for that to land you can check on it in the transfer area here once it's done though it won't automatically download I'll have to go to here to download it so you can see that one still well that one just finished apparently May 22nd it's already complete so all I have to do at this point is click on download. Finished a bit faster than expected. And it will download that as an IMSCC course cartridge file down to my desktop. Then I can import that into my Canvas instance. Now here I'm in a uh, in, in a uh, test mode but uh, that way I can f sling stuff around for demonstration video purposes without affecting my actual classes uh, in this particular case so I'm going to go into my class in this case it's my it's a, just a a shell an empty shell of a course that I'm going to use to dump it into but you would go to your actual class you, your classes now they'll be on a menu here and you go to your class so go into your actual class, just as I did here. I went into the Sandport class. And tell it you want to import existing content. Tell it the type. This is that common cartridge package. That's what these are. These are common cartridges. So go to common cartridge. Uh, it, you have to tell it where you're getting the common cartridge from. Uh, right there, my ethnobotany common cartridge class. The one I just did is still actually downloading. It hasn't finished, but I previously downloaded this. So I'm going to open that on the browse, and that then sets it up. The question bank, there aren't, I don't have any question banks. Uh, 
none to none to put in. Uh, Schoology, I don't believe, has those. And do not, I would not recommend importing assessment content as new quizzes. New quizzes are under development, and they aren't scheduled to be complete until sometime in 2022. And there are some, uh, there are some limitations on what new quizzes can and can't do. I have used new quizzes, but uh, I would recommend stick not not importing them as new quizzes. They are, uh, they would. I'm using now classic quizzes again. New quizzes gives us a few new question types, but there's still some incomplete features in the feature set, and so I'd recommend holding off on that. At a later date, there'll be a conversion tool to convert classic quizzes over to new quizzes. That has not been released yet. The rest I'd leave pretty much as it is. So I'd pretty much leave everything the way it is, except to tell it that you want all the content. You don't need to pick specific content. Uh, you can always delete stuff after you upload it. And then just tell it to import that. Now that process will take some time. Uh, uh, you can see it's going to take. It's going to upload it. But then after it uploads it, it has to process all of those files. But once those files are processed, then uh, let me go roundabout through my dashboard here. Um, once that's imported, it looks something like this. This is a sandbox into which I previously put this material and you can see what's come over and so it's brought over material now you will have to check through this material manually to see what things worked and what didn't for example it may be that uh, you'll have to go into tests some test types are not going to come over properly uh, and so you can go through this you click on edit at the top you can then check and see what the settings are in the settings area you can set up due dates at the bottom the questions on a classic quiz are over here they're not in a new quiz they're in a different place on a new quiz and so you can have a look at each of the questions and see whether the question came across in the manner in which you expected it to come across. So you are going to still have to check through all of your material, but for someone like myself where I've got images and other things, I'd like to bring them across, reuse them. This is a very valuable capability and it will be for many of you too. And so I would check through material edit material, alter material as always, update it, but you will have to go through each item. Now as you do that, uh, you'll find that your folders are now modules, so the folders that I had set up back in Schoology have become modules over here. I may need to rearrange or reorganize them uh, in a way that will make more sense over here, but the modules will now be over here as um, uh, folders pages you have to take a look at those anything that's like this with the slice is not yet published it hasn't been published yet so the students can't see it you can unpublish a whole module and then this won't be seen this is published but it won't be seen when from this module screen the only place they could see this would be from their assignments if they click on assignments they'll be able to see this one assignment but right now this module is hidden so the modules have to be published, and the course itself has to be published. If you come back to the home page for the course, you'll find that the whole course is currently unpublished. I have not published the course. So the students can't see the course at all at this point. The course is invisible. This won't, course won't arise till the fall term, so I won't be doing anything with it until next August at this point. So I'll just leave it in this form. Uh, there's no students in it. Uh, you'll see that if you come over to people, it doesn't have any students in it at this point, just myself as the instructor. So that's how you can bring material across. When you do do the import, it will take time. My sandbox import did complete, you can see there. There will be some issues, uh, and you can see that there was about uh, six issues listed and some link issues that are broken in some assignments. 
I'll have to go through each assignment uh, to see what links are working and what links aren't working. Uh, I can potentially look at the links here. So these links will get me back to where the broken link was and uh, potentially show me I may be able to work out what, what it was that specifically broke or if what it was didn't that broke didn't really matter. One of the things you can do is go to edit and then when you're in the editor and this isn't for everybody but it's certainly one thing I'll do I'll go in and look at the code underneath the page all the code is there and I'll take a look at it to see what it was that it might have been trying to connect to and I can see these are all image files but here at the bottom see these two links they're broken those two links were if I go all the way back to my ethnobotany course what those links really are are attachments at the bottom of an assignment if I've got uh, dig down to an assignment where maybe some assignment such as this if the assignment has if this if you have attached links to an assignment then those links will not come across through the common cartridge um, and this may take a while to load but if you recall you can you can attach links to the description box here links that you attach like this in Schoology won't come across and so if, if you use these they have to be replaced the other uh, the other links that you may have used will come across uh, but not the uh, not the uh, uh, Schoology uh, attachment links if you will so that's something to bear in mind as you're as you're working on on these does that's what that's trying to tell you and you can't the reason I'm showing you the code is because from this view you don't actually see that those links didn't come across because those links are off the bottom here you see they they're effectively invisible and so they they are only visible from this code view and that's what's the missing links in this case uh, I use them sometimes to attach links to other things but links can now be simply added right into your text this is a text editor you can insert links right into your document you can insert both external links or if you wish go down to course links and you can link to other pages in your course or announcements or assignments this course doesn't have much in that area uh, but if you want you can add links to anything including course navigation you can link to the announcements the assignments the discussion so you can link to individual uh, individual items uh, this one doesn't have any pages it does have some assignments but I can link to other stuff from here so that's uh, another powerful capability inside canvas is the ability to link internally to other parts of your course right from assignments and pages uh, in this case they don't have any pages in some cases you may find that some of your files have wound up in the files area uh, these are just import uh, matters most of these you can ignore but I wouldn't delete them these are the pages and the other things you're looking at the images and other things the files area though is an area where you can add your own folder and upload materials to it but that's a that's a little bit of a look at, at the export import process and uh, a, a couple of details on where you might try to find stuff that either gets lost uh, or that gets disconnected but there are some things like those attachments to assignments that don't come across the uh, common cartridge format if you do have questions, reach out, let me know. I thank you for your patience and for watching and uh, listening to this video.